Derrick Henry dropping loads in week six. 212 yards and two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Top, what, one to four moving forward. Is he your number one? Is he your number two? We've got Kamara, Elliott, McCaffrey coming back, King Henry. If you're drafting today, I want to know in the comments, who are you drafting number one overall? If you're not considering weeks one through well, six. So week seven on. Is Derrick Henry your number one? Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Smitty. Take a lap. Derrick Henry is a monster. Derrick Henry is a top one to four. I won't say like three to four or two to four, one to four overall player moving forward. Now, Dynasty, I have my concerns about him lasting two and three years at this kind of beating that he takes because like George Kittle, uh, King Henry abuses his own body because he tackles you. You don't tackle King Henry. He tackles you, and it's going to take a toll in Dynasty, but guess what? We're talking today, the now, week seven moving on. This guy's arguably the number one overall fantasy football player moving forward. I might rank Kamara ahead of him. I may rank Zeke ahead of him. I don't know yet. I don't know how I feel about it. I need to digest it a little bit, but he's in my top one to four. I know that. Where do you have him? Comment below. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Julio Jones, 137 and two touchdowns in week uh, six, eight for 10. Did great. Looks great. Those of you that bought low, congratulations. I think he still has a lot left in the tank for, for this year. However, I do believe that Calvin Ridley, King Henry, you've had enough attention. I'm going to take you off screen for a second. I do believe that Calvin Ridley will be the number one for week seven moving on. I think it's a great sell high opportunity for Julio, but you only sell high because I do believe he'll be a wide receiver one at some level all year long, as long as he stays healthy. Now, staying healthy is a concern I have. But Calvin Ridley, buy low. Now, Smitty, he just got 60 yards and a touchdown. How am I gonna buy low? Because this kind of thing creates a weird reaction where if you own Ridley and you watch Julio do better, and Julio has been better in the past, you're gonna have this weird feeling that you need to get rid of Calvin Ridley, that Calvin Ridley's time is up, Julio's back, and you want to take advantage of this and buy really, really low. They both can kind of eat in this offense, even if they lose games moving forward or if they turn it around, whatever you think about this Falcons team, doesn't matter. They're throwing the football a ton and there's enough footballs to go around for both Ridley and Julio to survive and, and score wide receiver one numbers. I do think Ridley will be the better of the two moving forward. Derrick Henry again, 212 and two, what a beast. Okay, uh, Jonathan Taylor, JT, he is a great buy low candidate. I'm jumping right to the buy lows because people want more. They're expecting more. I admit I'm expecting more, but the bottom line is they're, they're going to feed him more and more as the season moves along. You're going to be able to get him much lower than, than running back one value, at least like high end or even medium running back one value. I think you could get him at potentially high end running back two value, maybe even low end running back two value. And I think that package is in all the risk you need if he doesn't deliver top six to 10 running back numbers all year long. I go get Taylor. I think he's a running back one, but I only pay probably running back two pricing for him. And you can do it because I get asked over and over, should I trade away Jonathan Taylor? You guys, I get what I coined a ATP, an average trade position data, because I get so many questions through heysmitty.com, through my phone calls that you can order if you want me to call you right now, and through my sleeperu.com uh, question service that I have. I get so many questions when I see a player come in over and over and over and JT's one of them. I know I've taken the temperature of my own audience and numbers don't lie. Massive amounts of data don't lie. And massive amounts of people are asking me about trading Jonathan Taylor away. So I know for a fact that he's probably the most likely player running back one potential that you can buy low on heading into week seven on. I bring up Calvin Ridley again real quick because he is a buy low target and I wanted to with the uh, title on the screen, make sure you know, go buy Ridley low. Lamar. Lamar Jackson, I said go buy him before this week and I think there's still opportunity to go get him. Now 100 yards on the ground and a touchdown might make his owner a little bit skeptical of trading him away. And I don't think you're gonna be able to give your quarterback for Lamar. 
you're gonna have to get more creative than that. You can't just do these kinds of like one for one offers or I'll give you my Stafford and a bogus waiver wire guy for your Lamar. You're not gonna trick anybody that way. You've gotta go cross position on this one to get Lamar at a discount still. And I think you can do that through trading like a Todd Gurley, trading a David Johnson, give up an entire position like a running back, cross over position and offer that player for Lamar straight up. That one for one I think gets it done. If that owner of Lamar has another quarterback at all that they contemplate, you gotta think about it this way. If they've already got a Tannehill, they've already got somebody else that they can't put Lamar on the bench for. Every week they struggle with it. They wanna put Lamar on the bench, but they can't. You can solve their problem for them by taking Lamar away, using a player you don't necessarily believe in moving forward. It's the most beautiful way to acquire a player like Lamar going cross position. AJ Brown is back. 57 yards and two touchdowns. He looks so dominant in the end zone when they throw the football to him. I hope the yardage gets there. I think it will. Don't worry. They throw a ton. Everybody kept saying Tannehill won't throw the football. Tannehill's throwing the football a ton. He's throwing touchdowns to, to A.J. Brown. He's his favorite red zone target. The A.J. Brown era is already here. And this is a top five to seven wide receiver in the making. You can't buy Watson, but you can certainly sell him if you have another quarterback that's very capable on your roster and you're hit with injuries in this COVID offseason. You kind of got to take the, the sell highs where you can, even if you love the player, even if you still believe in the player. And when the opportunity presents itself like it does right here with Deshaun Watson, maybe you can sell him really, really high and use a quarterback that you put on your bench in order to improve another spot. We got to do what we got to do to survive in this COVID world that we now live in, this injury-filled world where all of our players are on IR, COVID's being handed out left and right like candy to all of our players. It's time to make some moves where you can while you can. I sell Will Fuller on the high. I'm not saying sell medium. I don't trust that ultimately he's going to be in the lineup at the end when you need him most, but I don't sell him low. I clearly believe in him enough to say, hey, I'm going to ride it out unless I get like some kind of huge upgrade, like use him and your bad quarterback to get Lamar or Mahomes or something like that. Maybe you can use Will Fuller to upgrade your running back into like a Josh Jacobs who's already had a buy. Or you go get a James Robinson low using Will Fuller in a lesser running back, like maybe a David Montgomery and a Will Fuller, you get James Robinson on the cheap. Maybe you trade Miles Sanders for said Jacobs and give Will Fuller up. You may say, I won't do that, Smitty, but I would. Why? Because I'm gonna get creative. I'm gonna say that, hey, Jacobs has already had his bye week, and I'm gonna be able to trade Sanders in, a guy getting nine carries, 10 carries, whatever. I don't trust his volume. I'm gonna go get a bye-free player in, in Josh Jacobs, Jingleheimer Schmidt, and give up on a Will Fuller. I'll do that, that's my style. It may not be yours. Make sure you use the right players and use the concept, not necessarily all the players. We may not agree on all the players we're inserting into the concept. Use the concept, use the theory, use the strategy. Kenny Galladay. You can't buy him low, but I want to see him on the screen because I love Kenny Galladay. 105, baby. Welcome back to the top five to seven. Again, maybe so high on Julio, but only so high. And go buy McCaffrey while you can. I think it's funny that people think that there's no shot in getting him so they don't even make an offer. I've been saying it since week, you know, two, three, whatever, that by the time people wait on players like McCaffrey, they're less likely to trade them because they've waited it out. Why are they gonna give you McCaffrey when they put in all the work of, of waiting on him? But the one caveat is when a, a fantasy owner gets handed another L and they're like, I can't wait another week, you might see somebody else swoop in and get McCaffrey at a deal. You could have got him at if you, if you tried. Don't just go player for player. Go cross position, go two for one, go three for two. Give up a quarterback maybe you don't want to give up because you have a backup you still love. Get creative. If you can weather it, McCaffrey can win you a league. Go buy Kareem Hunt on the low. Mike Evans, Godwin. Go buy DJ Chark on the low. I think DJ Moore, even though he had kind of a good game, is a good buy low candidate. Mark Andrews, buy him low. Try and get MT somehow. And go buy Clyde. Edwards, Hilaire, believe. 
in Clyde. Believe in the man. He will rise on Monday and try and get him now before it's too late. Even if he does well, I bet you owners will still sell worrying about Bell returning. Now, do you go buy it running back one value? No, because you don't have to. You no longer have to. And that's the value right now in Clyde. You can go get him at what I would guess to be third round value or later. If you go shopping for Clyde and you pay anything close to top 15 overall value, I will tell you take a lap, to take a take lap. A lap. I will scream at you take to take a lap because you lap. don't have to buy him any we're near that pricing at all like not even close he is a third rounder now to everybody who cares what you and i think if you're a believer maybe you aren't and that's okay too but if you believe in clyde if you believe the volume will be there if you believe that this is a cleveland brown situation where there's enough volume for two running backs and you might say smitty they're run first offense i don't care the running backs are used differently. The production may be distributed differently to the, the KC backs versus the Cleveland backs, but the running backs are being used. Receptions and rushes together. There's enough volume for Clyde to do what Hunt's been doing and Bell to do what Chubb was doing. If Bell is even the player people think he could be still, I don't know. I'm not gonna say he's not, but I think there's more risk in doubting Clyde at third round type value than writing him off at third round type value. Way more risk and I'm buying at every turn. And I do dynasty content as much if not more than redraft content. So for all of you worried about Clyde and redraft, I'm gonna use this to my advantage at every turn and try and get Clyde in every league that I don't have him in. Because even though people will be a little more bullish on him in dynasty versus redraft due to the Love Bell signing, people are still worried that the team doesn't believe in him and they may trade Clyde on the cheap at a value they shouldn't be trading him at. I'm buying. Go get him in week seven. I'm going to have a lot more content. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button because it helps the show. And get on over to heysmitty.com and order a phone call with me. And get on over to sleeperu.com. Get your bold predictions, your week seven rankings, everything you need to win your league. Let's get to it. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Smitty, 